Be cool, follow the rules. That's part of water safety. My video today is on water safety. And as we go through the video, I will add different safety tips. The first one will be look before you leap. So before you walk, jump into the water, I wanna make sure that you look at what's down there. Is there another person? Is there a big log if you're in the river that you might hit? Think about it, look around and make sure it's safe for you before you jump in. Look before you leap. If you get on the diving board to jump in and there's somebody underneath, you need to wait till they swim out of the way and the coast is clear for you to jump in. Don't just pack it, wear your jacket. These are some examples of some life jackets. These are vests, life vests, and they come in various sizes. The small one has a strap that goes underneath the child, and the medium and larger ones do not. You need to make sure that they fit properly, and when you float, they don't need to be sticking way up in the air. There's also a type that looks just like orange buoys that hang off of you. It is very important that you wear a life jacket if you're in a boat or in water that is too deep for you. You need to have it properly fit and wearing it at all times. Remember, boat safety, wear your life jacket. So don't just pack it wear your jacket too much sun is no fun remember the sun can damage your skin and cause skin cancer and you need a very good sunscreen these are the two choices i use the reason i use these two types of sunscreens is because they have zinc oxide in them zinc oxide blocks both uva and uvb rays and helps prevent cancer the water bottle is very important as well. Even when you don't feel thirsty or you're in the water and you don't think you need to drink water, you do. It replenishes your skin and keeps your whole system working well. So remember, sunscreen and water because you don't want to get sunburned or dehydrated. So too much sun can be no fun. Reach or throw, don't go. Anytime you see a victim struggling, you can reach a pole to them or you can throw a floating device to them. Another way to reach would be with your foot or your hand. So if somebody can't make it to the side, you can reach out. And help him to the side. Notice he didn't let go of the side, he held on to it. That will give him security so she doesn't pull him under too. Another thing you can do is throw a rescue tube or if you have a milk carton, you can put a little water in it, put the lid on it, tie a rope to it. Then you have a floating device that you can help save somebody, keep it around the pool or water that you're in. So we have a rescue tube, Ruby's having problems. He throws it out. He's, his body is low because if he stands up, she could yank on it and pull him in. So remember, reach or throw, don't go. Think so you don't sink. You may have been swimming all day long and you get a leg cramp or you're just tired. The easiest thing to do is to turn over and float on your back or tread water. If you are in the river and this happens to you, then lay on your back and just go with the current. It will eventually take you to the side if you kind of kick and swim diagonally with the current. You might end up a mile down, but at least you're safe. Remember, don't fight. Think so you don't sink. Floating on your backs. If you notice their feet don't necessarily come up, that's okay. Floating on your back has your head back, your face is above water, there's air in their lungs. Your lungs are like balloons. If you have air in them, then you will float. 
Your feet could be straight underneath you and you're still considered to be floating. One of the first steps to learning the crawl stroke, which is also known as freestyle, but I teach Red Cross, so it's called the crawl stroke or the front crawl, is learning the proper kick. You put your face in the water and you just kick your legs and it's the entire leg. Once you get proficient at kicking, then you move on to adding the arms. The arms come high out of the water. Now that you have the kick and the arms down, we're gonna add the breathing. So when you take your breath, you roll it to the side, leave your one ear in the water, pretend one arm pushes the face out of the water and the other arm pushes it back in. Another stroke we're going to learn is the back crawl. We'll start out with just the kick. So your head's back, you're laying on your back, and you have the same kick as on the stomach. It's called a flutter kick. Now that you have the kick down, we're going to add the arms. The thumb comes out first, and then the, you turn your hand and your pinky goes in first. Treading water is a survival skill. If you're tired and you can't go any further, you move your arms like a big figure eight, maybe like frosting a chocolate cake. Your legs, one leg goes forward, it's the same leg every time. It's not like you're running in the water. Your head stays above water and it's relaxing so you can just kind of rest a little and then you can start swimming again to make it to shore. One of the mottos for swimming is swim as a pair near a lifeguard's chair. That just basically means never go swimming alone. If something were to happen to you, nobody would be there to help you. So always have a partner and swim where it's safe. That's why it says at, near a lifeguard stand so that you have somebody else watching you. So you not only have your friend or your swimming partner, but you also have someone who is trained to help you. So remember, swim as a pair near a lifeguard's chair. Some basic rules for pool safety. Look before you leap. Remember, see what's in the water before you jump in. Walk, don't run. Slipping and falling could get you seriously injured. Plastic or paper, no glass. You do not want to drop a glass bottle and it shatter on the ground and somebody step in it. Inexperienced swimmers need to wear a life jacket. One at a time on the diving board. Too many people on the diving board, someone always gets hurt. Stay within arm's reach. Remember, again, wear your life jacket or stay where you can stand up or somebody can reach you. So today you learned how to be safe around the water. You also learned a couple of strokes that might help you survive in the water. Just remember the rules and follow them and you will have a great day swimming.